Okay, just another day in paradise here in Southern California. And even better, my package arrived with my uh, solar stuff. So, what have we got here? Got a few items. First thing, I have a new charge controller to replace the, the cheap uh, Renogy one I had in the original kit. This is one from Bogart Engineering. It's a 2SC2030. Um, it's a PWM charge controller. But the special thing about it is it's designed to work with my new Trimetric TM2030RV battery monitor system. Also from Bogart Engineering. So they work together and basically the monitor will uh, send charge char battery charge information and battery charging rate control to this and this will send back um, temperature of the batteries and solar current into the batteries so between the two of them they can um, efficiently charge your batteries so that's pretty cool um, to make them work properly I've also picked up a temperature sensor. This will the sensor will mount in the batteries, right near the batteries, and it'll t it'll tell the system what uh, temperature my batteries are at because batteries at uh, different temperatures tra charge differently and need different voltages to charge efficiently. So that's pretty cool to work together that way. Um, also, to make this work, I need a few items. Uh, I'm going to need some uh, wiring to go from the monitor to the out to where the battery compartment is and also a telephone cable it's just off the shelf cable and that'll go between the, the monitor and the, the charge controller so they can talk back and forth and communicate on a data line and then finally I had to get a shunt this is a 500 amp shunt and what that's gonna do is the monitor well, I have a couple of wires, some wires into this, and and this shunt will give the reading to the monitor, so it knows how much current is going through the the negative wire of my system. This is like a, a very uh, low in, low resistance, low impedance resistor in there, extremely low, so you don't lose very much uh, wattage across it or anything but by uh, putting some sense wires on these two terminals the, the monitor picks up the change in voltage as the, as the current goes through there and it can calculate it, do a mathematical calculation in its little computer brain and then it can read exactly how much current is flowing through there. At the same time it's picking up the voltage of the batteries so in combination of the two it can tell what percentage of uh, charge your batteries are at, all kinds of other things, I won't get too much into detail. It sort of has some simple settings and then you can keep delving deeper and deeper and unlock even more complex settings as you go, so that's really cool. Nice big manual with that, a manual with my charge controller. So I'm pretty excited to get that all hooked up into my system now. So first things first, I'll start uh, to take these apart, um, they come in these plastic boxes, but uh, to get the wires in, you have to actually put some holes in the boxes to run in, like the sensor wire and the, the wire to the trimetric. Since it's an optional thing for both, they both can work standalone, so you sort of have to do that. They kind of leave it all packaged together so you can do whatever you want to. Uh, it's best in your RV the way you're going to mount stuff. So let's just pop those boxes apart and give you a look inside. There we go. So these pop apart with four screws each. Uh, there's the monitor board. <clears throat> and on it, it's got a telephone jack and also these screw terminals. And that's where you insert the wires that are going to go back to the batteries and the shunt. And they're sort of all labeled in there. You can see their uh, G1, G2 signal, B1, plus B1, and plus B2. I think the plus B2 did a quick read through the manual. That's if you want to monitor a second battery bank, but I'll just be doing the one. So I'll only use four wires. 
that down there. You can see the plastic case, so I have to drill a hole so that the wires can fit through. I'll probably drill them at the back because I'm going to be mounting it into right onto my wall. And let's see, yeah, there's the cable. This end comes with nice uh, ring mounts, making it easy to attach to your sh shunt. It also has a fuse already, a couple one amp fuses, it just takes a one amp. So you put that on a positive terminal, and that should do it. And at the other end, it's not cut yet. You can see the wires there. I got 35 feet of line because I wasn't too sure if I want to move it around the rig. I'm going to put it in the bathroom at this point because that's where I made that hole in the wall and it will cover that nicely. Also be able to check it out when I first get up in the morning, do my business, check my solar power. <laughs> okay, and here's the inside of the charge controller. And you can see it's also got the telephone wire to connect to the monitor. And then up here it's got a plug for the sensor right there. And I'm not too sure what that other Molex connection is, maybe for diagnostics or something. So, same thing, I'll just drill out a hole so I can slip the wires through there as well. So, I've mounted the, the SC2030 controller in place of my Renogy one. And you can see it's uh, I got the solar power coming in here, I got a positive and negative hooked up to there and positive and negative are going out to the battery. Through uh, on this side there's the 40 amp breaker between the controller and the battery and between the solar and the controller I have a 30 amp fuse just for protection. So I haven't hooked up any metering or anything I just wanted to hook it up and make sure it was working to stand alone. It looks like it is. I got the charge light lit up properly there. So I got my telephone cable in there that's going to go to my monitor inside and I'm going to have to hook up my uh, temperature sensing down at my battery bank. But first I'm going to uh, mount my um, shunt next. There be my shunt and it's got a couple holes to mount it. I'll mount it on the back wall in there. And I also picked up a heavy short piece of uh, battery cable had it made up for uh, about 20 inches long. It's a uh, number two gauge because all the um, all the negative loads are going to go on one side of the shunt. So I'm going to have my DC house loads to the RV. I'm going to have my inverter load and my solar charge controller coming down to that negative side. So they're all going to tie in, and then they have to go to the battery bank. So I want a really heavy wired. To finish the job, so I'm going to wire that onto the other side of the shunt. There we go, shunt installed. So on this side here, I have the heavy cable that I showed you before going to the uh, negative side of my battery bank, and as the instructions say, I'm supposed to put the white sensing wire on that side. Then on the other side of the shunt, I have two black sensing wires that go back to the battery monitor. And I also have my three different negative uh, ground or negative loads there. Uh, one goes to the chassis, connected right to the chassis, and then it's also connected through to uh, all the 12 volt lighting and, and 12 volt circuits inside the RV, not just your regular. RV um, electrical. Uh, another one is going to my 1000 watt inverter and another one is the charge controller from the solar. So it's going to measure everything that goes in and out of my battery bank. Um, there was one other wire that came with that thing and it needs to find a 12 volt so I just hooked it on to, to uh, the bottom lug here on one of my breakers. It actually goes right to the positive side of the battery bank. 
And then there's a little holder for a 1 amp fuse. I'm not going to put that in yet because I still have to run all my wires through and hook them up to the trimetric meter inside. So this is the last thing they want you to do in case something's wrong. We'll just pop the fuse. So I'm going to continue on. I've got my wiring that has to go into where my trimetric is. should be pretty easy because I'm just going to follow the same path that I hooked the solar wires up. So I fished it up through the rig and out to my uh, boo-boo hole from last video. That's actually where I'm going to mount the monitor now. Cover up that hole. That's where the solar wiring goes. So now I have lots of cable. I'm going to uh, hook up the monitor connections now. There we go. So I got the two blacks, they call G1 and G2, I guess for ground. The white is a signal, and then the red, it's marked with a red as well. I guess that's one you don't want to screw up because it's going to have the 12 volts on it. And there's one extra lug, and that says B2, and that would go to a, a second uh, battery, I assume. I think it can um, do all the fancy tricks with one battery. Let's say you had an RV and you had your coach batteries and you're, you got the monitor for that. Maybe it would uh, run to the starting battery just to give you a voltage indication of the, of the starting battery. Okay, let's sew it up and then I'm going to go put that fuse in and see if we get any sparks. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's actually working. So that's the voltage of the batteries. 13.2 right now. Uh, it's current, it's 0 0.1, hmm. and lines. So I've got a, a bunch of setting up probably to do. So anyway, that's the install. Um, tomorrow I'll just run through the basic setup with you, and then uh, we'll call it a day for this video, and I'll, I'll be back later on after I've used it for a while with a more in-depth explanation. Explana explanation of things. Whew. Okay, it's getting late. Time for a beer. Well, stayed up a little late last night. Lots of reading to do. There's a uh, kind of a quick reference there, a little thin thing, but then you get into the installer's instructions, user instructions for trimetric, and then the, the solar controller user manual. So, there's a lot of settings in this little box, especially when the controller's hooked up to it. But I'll just give you a rundown of the quick setup to get her going. Um, you might see these flashing. They're not really flashing in real life. The camera's doing that. So, let's see. You got the select button and a reset button. And between those two buttons, you access all the functions in the unit. So it can get a little... Uh, tedious and that takes a little bit of learning to understand you know which buttons to push to get in there it's if you can't program a, a microwave or a clock radio or a VCR then it might you might find it a bit difficult but I like it because it I can really geek out on it goes you can dive really deep into the settings it, and uh, get a lot of information and really uh, set up your batteries really have full control of the charging process so once I got it going, you can see there's, there's the voltage. Um, right now we're drawing negative 5 amps. It's early in the morning so the solar hasn't kicked in. I have the charge, or my converter turned off just for testing. And right now Anne's using her computer. That's drawing the bulk of it. Um, percentage full, right now that's blank because I haven't, actually it has to, do a full charge cycle and come up full again before it can give percentages. And then that's blank because I don't have a second battery on there. So to access the setup menu, I have to hold the select and I'll see AH, then I'll see P. I let go when it hits P. So the first P1 is. Um, the battery uh, absorption charge rate, I believe. P2's got to do with a percentage. P3 
is the total amp hours of the, the battery capacity of the bank. P4, I'm not sure. P5 is off. P6 is off. Okay, P7 is an important one. You see where it says L1. There's actually four different levels of um, settings. And level one is kind of the the easy settings, the, just your basics, and then you can get deeper and deeper. So I'm going to get it to to level four, so I can get into the setup for the charge controller. So same thing. I am just going to. Oh, that's what I have to do is hold these two together, and then you get the flashing lights. Then I can push reset to like a level four. Then select. So now I should be in level four. Yeah, see now I have more programming modes as I go. And there's a pile of them, but I'm interested in getting to P22. There we go. So P22 is setting up my um, charge controller. It's gonna. It's kind of a quick setting. It's going to set a bunch of parameters based on what uh, what my battery is. The, the, the folks that have made this have co been in contact with all the battery manufacturers and got the settings for each of them. So interstate 12 volt is profile number 13. And when I change that, it's going to change eight settings in here to match that battery profile. So what I want to do again is hit both, get the flashing, and I can hit reset. It'll go through until I find 13. There we go. So I'm on profile 13, and that's for interstate 12 volt wet cell. And I hit select, choose that. And then I also have to hit select, hold select for five, count of five. did that wrong. Okay, no, it's hold reset for count of five. So five, four, three, two, one. There. So now that's set all those uh, eight different settings in here. Um, I do want to change two of them. So I'm going to go to go back, keep pushing this. Okay. Go back into my programming again. You see, it can get a bit tedious until you learn how things work. Right, P1. So P1, I want to change that to 14.8. I've been in contact with a guy named, uh, you probably know from the internet, as Handy Bob, Solar Handy Bob. And uh, he's had a lot of experience with with this particular charge controller and meter and he recommends with the way I do the boondocking to go with 14.8 on that setting and then next I'm going to have to go to P3 which is my amp hour capacity I'll push those again and he recommends even though my stated capacity by the battery manufacturer is 464 he says set it about 400 because they're not always exact they're not always well basically says they overestimate and also boondocking and cooler nights 400 is what he recommends so I'm going to go with his settings because he has a ton more experience than I do with this system there we go through all that. You see all the settings there. I won't go into all this because I'm still learning myself, but uh, once I figure everything out, I'll come up with another video and show you all those different settings if you want something to put yourself to sleep. <laughs> so there I'm at 12.6 batteries are negative 5.6 amps. Okay, there's one other um, that's the the, the mains um, readouts there, but if you hold 
the select to AH, you get a secondary menu. So that's like amp hours, probably haven't really read all that yet. There's all kinds of different uh, things here. PR. This one, SOL, stands for solar amperage coming out of my controller. So it's reading what's coming out of my SC2030 Bogart controller. So that gives me the current that my solar panels are putting out right now. And one a couple more. This Celsius is that shows that the, the temperature sensor is working in the battery bank. Gives me the readout in Celsius degrees. So there you go. Okay, well I've left the manuals for Angie to check over and then she can explain things to me. She's a pretty smart beagle. So inside here, just have a few uh, tidbits to clean up in the future. Um, on my shunt here, um, I had to put all three on one side. What I'd like to do is get a little bus bar and spread them out a bit more so they're not all piled up on this one lug. Um, I also want to put in a what they call a cat, just catastrophic fuse right near the battery so that all the, the wiring will come into a main couple hundred amp fuse in case something really goes wrong. There'll be one final fail-safe fuse, but uh, that's the system right now. It keeps changing all the time, but I think I'm getting there. So, uh, next time I'll uh, have a video with uh, a little more information on that trimetric monitor, stuff I've learned and uh, how it performs out there in the desert. we got about five more days in the RV park and then we'll uh, head out for some uh, serious boondocking for about a week. Test out this new solar system. Till next time, it's Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers! Happy trails! Hey, get out of that barbecue! Yeah! Hey!